Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Evan Vestlang, and I'm one of the um, I'm one of the co-founders of Santiago. And one of the things that we have seen a lot of examples of over the last year is different integrations with uh, Shopify. And uh, we've seen quite a few of these. One one example is um, one example is Joseph uh, Thomas's project to sync Shopify data over to Sanity, or for example, Kevin Green's Midway for Gatsby JS that we've seen a lot of people building building Shopify storefronts on on top of Sanity. Now, a a couple of months ago, there was a new starter that showed up called called Hull, uh, and it's Next.js and it's deployed on Vercel, and it it looks extremely feature complete. And it also looked like it was less of a hassle to set up because it can be quite a, a lot of work to set up these integrations between uh, between third-party systems. So we also think that whole is a really good example of how you can sync data resources into the Santi content lake and how you can enrich it layer top of ground truth data and just create better experiences where D2C companies can really get their story across to people. And uh, and yeah, so we thought that we would, along with Nick DiMatteo that has uh, that has built uh, that has built health, we thought that we would launch a, a new version of it uh, here today. And it's going up today as a starter on Santiago Create as a community starter that installs with just a few clicks. So uh, with that, I would like to introduce uh, Nick DiMatteo, uh, climber and uh, developer and creator of Hull and uh, Lee Robinson, uh, developer relations uh, from Vercel uh, that Hull uh, deploys to. Uh, so Nick, uh, why did you create Hull? <laughs> Thanks, Evan. Um, you know, it's funny, Hull really started as like a personal project to really help kickstart my development process for new client work. Um, and you know, our industry moves so rapidly that you often are learning new patterns, technology, and skills while building projects. So I found myself frequently tweaking and reiterating things that I learned from past projects. Uh, but pulling all that knowledge out each time is pretty hard. So I, I kind of built Hall to help myself remember my own process and the things I've learned along the way. Um, so kind of what went along with this was how to handle e-commerce sites, um, specifically Shopify, which is still one of the more popular platforms for brands to leverage and sell their products. Unfortunately, their native theme solutions fall a bit short when um, unique marketing experiences are needed for the front end. And it becomes even more apparent when the client wants to be able to control that experience as well. Uh, so you'll find yourself deep in the Shopify meta fields doing some pretty hacky stuff to achieve what you need. Uh, so it's not great for developers, and it's certainly not great for the client who has to manage that. Um, so, you know, enter headless and uh, specifically with sanity and the ability to roll your own schemas and use Grok to manipulate that data to be exactly what you want. You really can't beat it. So getting out of Shopify native, both for the developer and the client, opens up the floodgates of possibilities. And like you mentioned, there are some great work resources out there already, like Kevin Green's Midway. But I had fallen in love with Next.js and Vercel, as well as the data and CMS experience with Sanity. So I was eager to come up with a headless solution that was explicitly built with those tools. And I actually worked with Kevin quite a bit to wrap my head around dealing with Shopify in a headless environment. So a huge shout out to him for that. Um, you'll find some similar pattern, patterns from Midway in Hall. Awesome. So um, so Hall is then using, it's using Santi to sort of store the data and then it's, and then it's using Shopify as an e-commerce backend. Could you uh, say a little bit more about sort of what the, what the front end yeah, what, for sure. What so, what's framework? Yeah, so Hall, like a little bit more about what it is. It, it it was and still is a starter code base for building production ready headless Shopify storefronts. Um, but with this version two that we're unveiling today, it it really functions as a fully featured production ready storefront out of the box. All you have to do is connect Shopify. Uh, your Shopify account and you can start selling right away. Uh, of course, like customizing the look and feel is important. So you can go to town ripping things apart or keeping it simple and just update some CSS to make it yours. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, I really wanted to leverage Next.js for this and it ended up working out perfectly because I was able to use the custom API endpoint features to create a seamless integration with Shopify. So. How it works is we use the Shopify webhooks for when products are added, updated, or deleted, that when triggered, hit our custom next API endpoint. And that API endpoint is where all the magic happens. It takes the product data sent from Shopify and syncs the important information directly into Sanity. Uh, this data is uneditable to ensure everything stays in sync between the two platforms. But this, in turn, powers the front end product pages 
Um, but we now have full control over the look and feel because we're outside of Shopify. Uh, but we still get to leverage all the great things about Shopify, like managing inventory, order fulfillment, and their super trusted, you know, checkout experience for collecting payment. Um, and then, of course, you know, deploying to Vercel makes everything a breeze for the API endpoints and the hosting experience. Maybe, uh, maybe Lee wants to, or maybe you, Nick, or Lee wants to say about what sort of how next uh, how Next.js plays into sort of this, and uh, and sort of how how you're using lambdas on uh, on the Vercel platform to to sort of bundle this, make it make it easier for people to consume. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to jump in here. First off, I I love that solution because I think that you know traditionally you might have to have a separate express server or a separate backend server managing receiving those events from those webhooks. So it's awesome that you get to do that all inside of the bounds of Next.js, and it really ties into exactly what we want folks to do, which is have a hybrid solution that not only allows you to do you know something static, some things on the server, have your API all included inside of the framework such that you can. Pull the levers when you need to, essentially. So I, I'm really glad to see that that worked out for you. Very, very cool. Uh, I wonder if, uh, if sort of, if, um, if also, if Yuli would like to sort of compare and contrast maybe a, a little bit what what building with Next.js is like compared to building these uh, these sites inside of Shopify, or if it, or if Nick would like to comment. Yeah, I can give my opinion, which is probably more at a high level. And then I bet Nick has more of the nitty gritty details as he has experience with both, I'm assuming. Um, so from my high level 50,000 foot view, uh, I think most of the Shopify templates are using liquid templating, I believe. Uh, they also have a, a React library, uh, Polaris components, I believe too. But uh, from my take on it is that they give you a solution and it's a, a pretty opinionated solution. Um, the thing that I liked about this starter when I checked it out is um, kind of what Nick was talking about where you're using both solutions for what they're the best at. So you're using Shopify for the things that it's great at and you're also having a really flexible custom solution with Sanity for for monitor, for handling the rest of those things too. So then when you bring something like Next.js on top of that, you're essentially getting you know backed by an open source community and you know companies helping to contribute to this platform that's constantly getting updates constantly getting faster and really all you have to do is an npm update so i think that's why a lot of people are buying into the nextjs ecosystem is you know just in the most recent release that we did you know 200 millisecond faster reloads on every reload um, bundle size was decreased by 50% like all these performance improvements um, security updates are just an npm install away yeah, to kind of go off what Lee's saying, you know, a lot of with the bundle sizes and just the developer experience with building and React on top of, you know, with Next, I think just opens a lot of possibilities for both the developer and the designer who's creating, you know, the experience for these brands that, you know, want a unique experience that aren't kind of stuck in a, a, a box with some of the limitations with Shopify native and, and the theme editing there, like you said, with Liquid. Um, I think that stuff's all great too when it comes down to you know performance, uh, accessibility, um, all those things you get a little bit more control over when you know you're able to work with something like an open source thing with Next and, and Sanity. So yeah, cool. I think uh, I think with that it would be really really cool if uh, if Unit could just sort of show us the project and give us a give us a demo uh, of it. We can see what yeah it for does. sure. Cool. Yeah, so let's, think, let's I mean, take a look and, and just kind of look at the, the starter at first, and then we can dig into some of the cool features with it. So this is the homepage. It's just uh, you know, a, a standard homepage kind of leveraging um, common patterns in, in e-commerce websites, uh, just kind of showcasing some products here. Uh, and then you can get in into the shop, dig into that a bit. Got a grid view of products here. You can access variants, toggle through uh, gallery photos, uh, we have pagination, things like that. Um, when you click into a product, you have options associated with those. And this is all accessible as well. You can kind of use your keyboard to navigate around. Um, you can enter in quantities. So we have like a true quantity picker that ma maps with what's expected with accessibility can add all these things to your cart. And then when you actually go to check out, that's where it kicks you off to the, the Shopify experience. Um, 
There's a lot of cool features in here that I want to dig into with the back end um, and how that kind of relates to the front end. So if we look at the Sanity Studio, um, the way that all of these pages are kind of set up is a very modular approach. So it gives you the ability to really create any kind of layout you want, right? So you can roll your own modules for this, you know, using Sanity Schema and then flowing that data into the next JS front end. Um, the, the starter comes out of the box with um, what I think is one of the most power, powerful modules, and that's this freeform um, content grid module. So the way it works is you can basically add a content grid module that you set up a grid size. So this is all mapped to Tailwind. We're using Tailwind baked into this starter, so you can kind of use that or use your own CSS. But Essentially, you can create grids and then add columns. And then the cool thing with that is inside your columns, you're adding content blocks. And this is where you can get really unique here. And you could add freeform content, um, products that you could reference, accordions, anything you want. We have some included out of the box. But just to kind of map that to what you're seeing. So any piece of content you're seeing on the front end, like this is a module, so is uh, you know, anything that you're seeing on, on here, this is a module, this is a module. They're all using the content grid block to create these, these columns and then flowing in content that you, you want to see in there. Um, so that, that's kind of one of the cool things with that. And then that also extends to the product level. So typically, you know, especially when, you, when we're thinking about Shopify native, um, you'll often see product pages that are pretty uh, rigid in their layout. You're kind of stuck with you know, the, the options at the top, a gallery on the left, and then everything kind of flows underneath that. Um, with Hall, one of the cool things that we did for the product pages is that while, yes, it has a lot of that unique data coming in from, from Shopify to, to this document uh, itself, you can see that kind of synced up, up here. Um, the actual page content is modular, just like every other page. So that product hero that you're seeing here, uh, where you can actually add to cart and interact with the product photos, that's its own module. And you can actually populate content around it, move it around, put it wherever you want, um, which is pretty unique, in especially when, when you're wanting to build out unique experiences for those product pages to create more of like a story uh, to get people enticed to, to add it to their cart and purchase. Um, so that kind of flexibility uh, is all because of Next and all because of Sanity and being able to kind of rehydrate the page with new content, uh, update things, and, and just move things around in a very modular way. Um, so that, that's probably one of the cooler things as far as you know, laying out content for your pages and doing it because we're outside of Shopify native, being able to really control that. Um, but one of the other big big things to kind of tackle with this that you know not a lot of people talk about is while static generation is great and we get all of those great performance benefits, it becomes a, a bit of a, a hurdle when it comes to uh, e-commerce stuff because we need to account for inventory. Uh, a lot of the times people are going and they're buying things. I'm sure we're all familiar with like the Xbox, PlayStation stuff where people are desperately trying to find one and checking inventory and trying to figure out like how they can how they can get one so you know being able to have a static site but then also taking into account you know data that's changing pretty rapidly where orders might be coming in and a product is now all of a sudden out of stock how do we how do we address that in a kind of static headless environment like this well we still get all of the benefits of static generation but you know, being able to show live data. And that's where um, a really cool thing that maybe Lee can talk a little bit about is SWR, um, which is a, a React plugin that they built uh, that allows you to do some pretty cool things. Um, and we actually utilize that here on the Hall Starter to um, manage inventory updates on the page in real time, um, which I'd, I'd love to show, but I'll let yeah. Lee kind of talk a little bit about SWR to fill that in. Yeah, absolutely. One thing just to backtrack to that I love about the modularity of this is with the interface you're getting through Sanity, this is almost like a low code builder, right? Like somebody who has no context of this can come in here and drag around section, add new blocks. And it really bridges that gap between developers, designers, other collaborators, marketers, executives. And I really, really love that. So great, great job with that as well too. But yeah, going to SWR, 
I definitely agree with your point about, you know, sometimes you have to move beyond the limitations or the, um, the trade-offs that you have with a fully static site. And the nice thing about doing things on the client side then with something like SWR is you're just taking advantage of what React is great at, which is giving you that interactivity. So SWR is a custom hook that basically allows you to fetch some data from either an API endpoint in Next.js or just some remote data somewhere. It could be your own API. It could be really whatever you want. And the great thing about here is that you can do that on the client side to check what those inventory counts are. So if I'm about to hit add to cart, you know, it's going to check, especially with SWR, it will refocus. When you refocus on the page, it will go fetch the latest information there and we'll be able to see those inventories in real time, which is great because then there's not a lot of extra plumbing that you have to set up to do real time. I know in the past, uh, setting up real time was something that was kind of difficult. So I'm really happy to see solutions like this. And there's a few other solutions too in this space that really simplify that for people getting started. Yeah, and just to kind of um, illustrate that a bit, uh, you can see here I have Shopify open and I'm, I'm looking at my variants for this particular product that we have here. Now, this page on the right has obviously been statically built. So everything you're seeing as far as inventory goes is kind of set in place. So this small t-shirt in black is available. But we can see in here, you know, orders might be coming in. So this quantity count is going to go down. Um, and one of the other cool things, just to kind of sidebar us for a second with haul and, and inventory stuff, um, the way we treat it is we just have toggles for low stock and out of stock. And those numbers can be set. So you can decide what, what constitutes low stock. Maybe it's under 10 or 20 or 30 items. Uh, for testing purposes here, demo purposes, I, I dropped it to five. So if we were to kind of move this down, say people orders are coming in and the quantity is going down um, and you're browsing the site in real time. Now, remember this page has been statically built previously. Um, so it doesn't know in the source code that the inventory is now low. Uh, but you'll notice when I tab back in, I haven't even refreshed the page and a low stock ticker just appeared. Um, so really cool that you could be browsing the site and say you get distracted. Maybe you're browsing during work and you have to go to a meeting and then you come back and you're like, oh yeah, I wanted to buy that thing. You know, it's going to give you a real time update of like, hey, actually this is now out of stock and you didn't even have to refresh the page. It just because of what Lee was talking about with SWR and revalidating that inventory uh, on focus, it, it's pinging Shopify to double check that this product is actually still in stock for you. So if I was to bump that down to zero, this would go out of stock and you wouldn't be able to add it to your cart anymore. So really cool way to kind of bridge that gap between static and uh, you know having dynamic data flow into the page. Awesome. Uh Thank you for the demonstration. And I just have to ask also, I mean, this is a, um, I feel that this is a starter that kind of goes above and beyond. It has sort of all of the lived experience that you need to make this stuff actually run in sort of the production from, from inventory updates to performance to accessibility. Um, I have to ask, it even sort of comes with a, a great sort of set of merch. Where did that yeah. come from? Is there a story attached to it in that? There is. So uh, it's it's funny that you mentioned that. Yeah, I, I had leveraged um, some good buddies of mine at the Collective Works. They're a design studio in New York City. They do great work. Um, I, I had them make a bunch of fake products and turned out really awesome to the point where I'm now like wishing I could actually purchase these products, even though they're not real. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm with you on that. I wish I could yeah. own it. <laughs> I was looking at it last night and I was like, that American Towers shirt, it's, it's really great. It's really good. <laughs> so yeah, so um, thank you for, uh, thank you for, thank you for coming uh, here and sort of presenting this. Um, I don't know if you have, do you have anything, any last words to Adley? I was going to say, I, I threw this in the chat as well, but uh, yeah. right, before, right before we got on live here, I was able to actually use the Sanity Create Flow to set up my studio, deploy to Vercel, and get my own version of this and it took like three minutes, I think. So that's yeah. pretty incredible that you can get something this high quality. And it's it's clear that you've put a lot of work into this and you've done an excellent job. So it's amazing that I can, you know, take this and start yeah. and build, you know, I'm gonna build my own vinyl record shop or something now. I have this amazing starter. Yeah. 
Yeah, you go to you go to yeah. Santiago slash and create, and then uh, and then just scroll to the bottom of the page. You and you will find this, and uh, it will it will fire it up on Vercel for you and seed it with the data that is here. So it will uh, it will deploy this thing for you live. You will need to set up the Shopify end of it and configure a couple of tokens. But uh, apart from that, uh, that's the only thing. Um, that's the only thing that we you that you need to do. So, uh, yeah. thank you for thank you for coming and showing this. Uh, it's um, yeah, I've, and I think it's just like it's. I think starters often are these bare bones affairs that need a lot of work and a lot of hand holding to actually understand. Uh, but I think this sort of this uh, this sets the bar for sort of of how sort of ready ready made and packaged and experienced. Can sort of be and like you say, there have been people building these solutions for for Sandy for a couple of sort of years. So this is really like uh, several projects that have built up this experience for how to make this easy over over time. So um, so yeah, thank you so much, both of you, and uh, and I hope that we will see everyone that is still uh, listening to stream uh, at the at the open house uh, in just a uh, in just like uh, half uh, in just uh, half an hour and i hope that we will see you all uh, then uh, and um, and yeah and that also nick and lee can can join us there thank you yeah for sure thank you evan thank You're you welcome. Lee. thank you so Great much chatting. thank you both of you